Hello everyone, welcome back to my tutorial on Android Framework Component Part 10b. In the last tutorial, we had seen some of the concepts regarding Android USB Framework. In this particular tutorial, let's continue with some more topics related to Android USB Framework. Hope you all remember me, myself, Dimple here. So first, we will see what is USB Tethering. The process of sharing an internet connection with a PC is referred to as tethering in mobile world. So you, there are many different ways through which your um, device can share internet with your PC. It can be USB or it can be Wi-Fi or it can even be Bluetooth. So when an Android mobile device tethers using USB, it enumerates as a remote network driver interface specification rndis device so rndis specification will define communication protocol between the host and network devices connected over transport such as usb okay so let's understand about rndis more in this particular slide rndis is a transport specification which states that transport bus has to provide reliable control and data channels for delivery of network packets between the host and the device so it will take care of delivering all the network packets between the host and the device so in rndis setup the responsibility of the host is to initialize the protocol establish the control and data channel with android device and exchange control and data messages whatever is required by the device so host has the responsibility of establishing the protocol it will establish these data and control channel with the device and provide whatever information is requested from the device through this connecting bus the device responsibility is to interpret these control messages sent by the host and respond to them with appropriate data indicating the network and device status to the host and exchanging data messages as requested by the host so here this device has a responsibility of interpreting all the control messages sent by the host and it will respond with appropriate data back to the Host. So this entire um, slide or this entire picture depicts RNDIS architecture. So USB tethering will start when user enables USB tethering in his or her device. So user is the one who will initiate the entire USB tethering functionality and all these details are present in tether settings dot java in this particular java file uh, usb tethering framework will set the usb tethering interface function so that interface function is present in this particular java file and that function will be invoked the tethering functionality is provided in Android USB gadget driver. Gadget driver registers itself with network driver to bring up a network interface over USB. So all this gadget driver, network driver, all of them are present in the kernel side. So one, there is a communication link between one component to another component. Say gadget driver will communicate with a network driver and network driver will bring up the entire network interface. Android connectivity framework will use NetD daemon present in the system slash NetD to manage the network interface for data service and to collect the necessary statistics. Next we'll see what is USB accessory. So there were some of the Android devices which had this limitation that they could not connect themselves with the external USB drivers. So AOA was introduced to overcome this limitation of Android powered devices that cannot initiate connections with external USB drivers. So other accessories can be external accessories can be audio docks, lighting controllers, SLR camera controllers and other products that developer wants to communicate with over USB so there is an Android device and there are other external accessories and the communication between these two will happen over USB and this accessory framework will take care of this part so Android accessory will detect the connected Android power device and checks for device accessory mode it will set the necessary mode settings and start the Android device in accessory mode and this will start communicating 
for example you have a android device and you want to connect an audio dock to that device over usb so this usb accessory framework will take care to check the device accessory mode if device accessory mode is not set this framework will set the mode and start communication between your android device and your audio dock so functional requirements for this accessory hardware is first you have to detect the aoa device first you have to see if your android device supports this accessory mode so a request 51 having an intent accessory get protocol is sent to the device and if the device supports this accessory mode you will get the device will return an integer value along with the version protocol version it supports after that another request called 53 having an intent accessory start is sent to the device so when android device receives this accessory start then communication with usb framework will also start so how this communication happens android accessory uses usb to talk to the aoa application running on the android powered device so the communication between your android device and your external accessory attached will happen through usb framework communication between kernel and framework is through this particular file which is present in slash device slash usb accessory location so this file will have all the apis which are managed in java native interface layer next we'll see one of the interesting topics android debug bridge so android debug bridge adb is nothing but it was a tool that google provides along with android framework to facilitate debugging and managing an android system so this adb has debugging capabilities on an android system adb uses usb or tcp as its transport layer to communicate to android device so this adb will work on client server architecture client server architecture has three components server daemon and the client this daemon when you connect your android device to your pc this daemon will run on your android device so this is a process running on your android device and whatever adb shell or adb lockcat terminal present on your pc that is acting as a client and server will serve communication between the daemon and the client so the command serviced within the server without communicating with android device is called host service so the server will not communicate with the android device if it provides the result back to the command in such case it is called as host service and if the server contacts or fetch information from the device that time it's called as local service and also remember when the device is connected to your pc server will use the usb architecture or usb framework so when emulator is connected not the actual device only when emulator is connected the server will use tcp this protocol is simple it simply forwards packet to and from the server then this connect command is used to exchange the data between the host and the device and there are two types of adb command so one type is that i'm taking an example so this is an example for the first type adb devices so when your device is connected to your pc and you type this adb devices in your terminal what happens server will respond to command locally without contacting the adb dim daemon without contacting the device server will just list all the devices that are connected to your pc this is one type server is not contacting with your actual device the second type is type of command is adb shell so when you type adb shell on your terminal server will actually contact with the device that is connected so this is the second type so in the first type server will not communicate with the device in the second type it will communicate with the device so this was a brief details about usb framework thanks for watching please stay tuned in with my next tutorials